Someone said, I don't speak to my mum and dad and the We rebuke what they say, we don't listen to what they want to say and we do our thing. You're looking after your mother, you're serving her needs. He's obeying his wife over those things where he should be obeying me. This is nafs, this is not deen. The anger of her mother of al qama has seized the tongue of him at this juncture, he could not even say the kalima. One by one, one by one, if you act on these 15 things, azab will come to you the same way. My respected brothers and elders, young friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First and foremost, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us the ability to gather in the masjid in the house of Allah. Secondly, keeping in mind the, the time of year which we're in, it, I suppose it would have been appropriate to talk about one of two things. The first thing I had in my mind was initially to talk about the whole aspect of Good Friday and what it is in the life of a Muslim. Because at this moment is a very particular holiday, also well known amongst the Christian circles as well, which they refer to as Good Friday, you have Easter Sunday. And in school our children would no doubt learn about this, they would have picked up some things and I thought perhaps to talk about this. But then I also thought take advantage of another subject which is of equal importance, which we experienced within the past few weeks. I'm referring to something which the people refer to as Mother's Day. Or we also have even in addition to that the word Father's Day or the day Father's Day. In essence, every single day within the life of a Muslim mother and father, for them should be a Mother's Day and a Father's Day. Our religion is not restricted because of certain occasions. It's not like something spontaneously happens and we make that day a, a celebration, a, a means for us to gather together. Our deen is something which is practiced throughout the whole of our lives. It's not something we turn on and off like a light bulb or a light switch. It's something which we perpetually do and we always do. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly defined what are his rights and also what are the rights of the people and also in the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we find wadahat and explanation by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam i.e. what are the rights of Allah, what are the rights of the people. Subhanallah one thing which people even Muslims are also falling into the trap as well is this thing of Mother's Day. Now fi nafsihi if you want to talk about the masala to do something on one particular day of the year, let's just say over and above other days, there's nothing really wrong with that. But what happens is, is that see, shaitan works in different ways. What will happen is, is that someone who is accustomed to doing khidma, serving, looking after the parents, what will happen is they will then relegate or dismiss or perhaps even leave it to certain times and occasions of the year. So when you initially tell people, brother, this isn't really the correct stance of a Muslim, you should be serving your parents throughout the year, they say, well, what is the harm in such a thing? It starts off like that. And then what happens is every year you do something extra special on that day. Now what happens is, is that when, let's just for example, say on one particular day of the month, it is Father's Day or Mother's Day, you have a gift you want to give and you withhold that and you say, no, 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 I'll give it on Father's Day, I'll give it on Mother's Day now. You're starting to attach extra importance to it. Whereas that is not something which is Islamic. Again, I mentioned there's nothing wrong with uh, giving gifts to parents and so on. It's something which we've been encouraged. But to specify dates, times and so on, this is something where the Muslim has to think, hold on a second, is this part of the deen or is it not part of the deen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained May Faisala and, and has decided, Allah has ordained what? Allah ta'budu illa iyyah You will not worship no one other than Allah. First and foremost, if we, Allah forbid someone associates any partners with Allah, this is tantamount to shirk and a person will leave the fold of Islam. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And Allah has also ordained that we show kindness to our parents. 
اما يبلغن عندك الكبر احدهما او كلاهما فلا تقل لهما اف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما و وي هاف بين انستركتد ويذن اور دين الله اكبر ريمبر ذس اور دين اور ريليجن تو اس ذس اور ريليجن تو اس ذس The fact that how you treat your parents, if one of them or both of them attain old age, don't even say the word uff. Now those brothers who understand a little bit of Arabic, you know uff doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have any significance in terms of meaning. Malki Hafiz ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, al-Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi, he mentions the word uff has 70 different meanings. You, there's nothing you can pinpoint to say it means this. Mujahid Rahmatullahi Alayhi, who is a famous scholar of Tafsir, do you know what he says? He says, if your parents attain old age and you have to serve them like they served you when you was a child, where they would wake up in the night, they would tend to your feces, they would tend to your nappies, they would tend to your rags and your clothes, they would wipe your bodies and they would clean you of, of any filth, any excretion, despite them being tired they would tend to your necessities despite them being in discomfort they would uh, they would they would come to your comfort despite them being tired and run down and ill they would still serve you at whatever cost if you have to do this fala taqul lahuma uf don't you even say the word uf or o oh, or what don't even have the audacity that if you are put in that same predicament that you ever dare say something like that Your whole life your parents were serving you and for you to say something like this Don't curse them, don't rebuke them, don't swear at them The service of parents, Allahu Akbar What does it mention in regards to the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? We know of a very very famous incident or some ahadith or some particular people mentioned within the ahadith Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentions the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to me, يَأْتِي عَلَيْكُمْ أُوَيْسُ بْنُ عَامِرْ مَعَ أَمْدَادِ أَهْلِ الْيَمَنِ مِنْ مُرَادْ ثُمَّ مِنْ قَرْنْ There will be a person by the name of Uwais ibn Amir. He will come with notable people from the land of Yemen. He will be from Qarn. He will be from the tribe of Qarn. What happened to him? He had... He had what was called baras, a type of illness. Some people translate it as leprosy and leaving patches and marks on the skin. What happened? فَبَرَأَ مِنْهُ إِلَّا مَوْضِعَ دِرْهَمْ Allahu Akbar, he mentions in another hadith that he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I've been inflicted with this, Oh Allah, please cure me. On the ameen of his dua, Allah restored his health and gave him, wiped away his sickness and restored him with health again. He only had one small amount left on the body which had not been cured, which would be a sign. Umar radiallahu anhu mentions the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He said further about this individual called Awais ibn Amir, or we refer to as Awais al-Qarni, that what is, what is, what is regards to him? Lahu walida, he, had a, he has a mother. Huwa biha bar, he serves her, he's dutiful to her, he's very obligated in serving her needs. Now Umar, listen to me very carefully. إِنْ إِسْتَطَعْتَ If you, it is possible, أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرَ لَكَ If he is possible for him to seek forgiveness for your sins, فَفْعَلْ Then go to him and say to him, O oh, Awais, please, do me a favor, ask Allah, you make dua for Allah to forgive my sins, Allah will forgive your sins. We are not to, look, you have to understand, Sahaba, no person, no anyone can reach the status of a Sahabi. Balki, it reminds me of an incident where Sayyidina Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, who was the famous, they call him the Umar Thani, who was the second Umar. When he was, <coughs> when he was leader, when he was governor, he was Khalifa. What happened was, is that someone came to him and they said that I personally think, in my humble opinion, that you are more exalted than Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. It's an opinion, someone said, I think you're more exalted than Muawiyah. He stopped him then and said, hold your horses. If there, if the... The dust which flew from underneath the horse and went into the nose of the horse of Muawiyah is better than a thousand Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. 
It's mentioned, this has been mentioned by a different chain. Some people say the whole world of Umar bin Abdul Aziz and so on. The moral of the story is this. No non-Sahabi can reach the status of a Sahabi. They were blessed with the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But this individual, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions, if you, it is possible for you, when you see him, approach him and ask him, please, can you make dua for me? And ask him to ask Allah to forgive your sins. When he asks Allah, it mentions, لَوْ أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ if he asks Allah, he swears by Allah, Allah would never send him unanswered. In istata'ata, if you, it's possible, an yastaghfir lak, that he can ask Allah for your forgiveness, then ask him to do so. He asked him, and subhanallah, he had this opportunity. Moral of the story is this, why, how or why did Uwais ibn Amir get given this status? That he was being... Approached by a Sahabi, he was approached by a Sahabi to ask Allah to forgive his sins. Why? Because he had a mother. He used to serve his mother. He was in the time and the era of the Prophet ﷺ. But what happened? He couldn't go to the Prophet to be fortunate to sit in his company and become a Sahabi. Now just imagine that for a moment. Just, just picture this for a moment. You know that the Prophet ﷺ is in the neighboring, we call it country. In them time, they weren't the borders like we know it today. But you know that the Prophet ﷺ is not at a far distance away. On one side, you want to become a Sahabi. The fadila and the status is second to none. And on the other side, you're serving your mum. You're looking after your mother. You're serving her needs. What do you do? At that point in time, ask ourselves, what would we do? When we are posed with a situation and the parents say, please don't do this, we say, no, no, well, you know, we do our own thing. We, we, we rebuke what they say, we don't listen to what they want to say, and we do our thing. This is nafs, this is not deen. Suppose, it, if, for example, you were the nurse and the carer of your parent. For example, may Allah give all our parents health and siha and afia, but suppose if someone had that khidma and that responsibility, and they had this shawq, desire, ragba, talab, jahad, want, and wish to pray salah in the first saf of the masjid. But it means having to leave the care of their parent to go perform salah and come back. Hazrat Dr. Abdul Hay Arafi rahmatullahi alayhi mentions at this juncture by mentioning this incident, this is not the ittiba' of sharia, you are not following the sharia, you are not following the deen which Allah sent and Rasul sallallahu came with, you are following your own nafs. This is ittiba' on nafs now. Because uh, what is the name? What is, what is sharia? What is deen? Whenever you are posed with a circumstance, whenever you are posed with a situation, what does Allah say? What does Rasul Wasallam say? I have to do that at that juncture. That is deen. That's deen. Deen is not ittiba' on nafs. Whatever my, my, my heart says I'll do. Whatever my nafs, that's not deen. Always, wherever Allah and His Rasul says, khalas, that is the end of the subject, there's no room for negotiation. That is what our deen encompasses, that is what it entails. On one side, he could become a Sahabi. Sahabi, Allahu Akbar. He could become a Sahabi. And on the other side, he has to be dutiful to the mother. What does he do? I'll be dutiful to mom. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understood the situation which he was in. The thought, the, the, the want and the desire within his heart. But because he obeyed the commandments of the sharia, he, he obeyed the injunctions of deen, he obeyed the commandments of Allah. <coughs> what happened? <coughs> his dua had become so effective that Allah's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is instructing his companions, go to him and ask him to ask for your forgiveness. Do you understand the moral of the story? Look at the martaba, look at the maqam, look at the status someone will get by serving the parents in this way. So many ahadith, Allahu Akbar. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu mentions, مَا مِن مُؤْمِنٍ لَهُ أَبَوَانٍ فَهُوَ يُسْبِحُ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ إِلَيْهِمَا إِلَّا فَتَحَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بَابَيْنِ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ An individual, a Muslim, a mu'min, a believer, he starts off the day, he has a parent, mother and father. وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ إِلَيْهِمَا He's kind to them, he's dutiful to them, he listens to them, he obeys them, he serves them. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? He starts off his day in the morning where Allah opens up two doors of Jannat for him. And what happens further? وَلَا يَسْخَطُ عَلَيْهِ وَاحِدٌ مِّنْهُمَا فَلَا يَرْضَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَنْهُ حَتَّى يَرْضَىٰ If by chance, 
One of the parents fall upset with him or her. He's done something, he said something. As, a, as because of that, the parent becomes a bit upset by heart. It mentions, فَلَا يَرْضَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَنْهُ حَتَّى يَرْضَىٰ Until that parent of his does not become happy with him and reconciliation hasn't taken place, then Allah, he will be in the anger of Allah until he does not go and ask for forgiveness. Al-Qamar radiallahu anhu, a sahabi, is on his deathbed. He sends his wife to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa company and says, she says, my husband is breathing, he's last, he needs your assistance. Around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was Ali radiallahu anhu, Ammar radiallahu anhu, Salman radiallahu anhu, Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Four great sahaba. And what happened was that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sent them and said, see the situation, come back and tell me what's up. They go, they see that he's on his deathbed and he's not able to even pronounce the kalima at the time of dying. And it mentions in regard to him, al qama it mentions, it, it mentions that he was shadeed al ijtihad He was someone that used to exert himself beyond imaginable in, in, when it came to worshipping and obeying Allah. He used to do so much ibadah. And he used to spend so much as well, he would not know the weight of what he was spending and how much he was spending. Yani he used to spend so much that he wouldn't even know how much he's spending. Imagine the ibadah. How, what, we're not doing anything to start off with. And these are people that were doing and despite that, watch what happens. So four sahaba are around him, they're saying to him, read the kalima, they're making the talqeen, encouraging to read, but he can't read. So then what happens is, is that Ali, Ammar, Salman, sent Bilal to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and said, inform him, this is the situation. We are afraid that if he breathes his last, he will not die on the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa It's a very urgent matter, please come. So when Bilal radiallahu anhu went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, obviously he had other people around him at that time as well, he said, okay, quickly go and fetch his mum. If she can't, meaning the mother of al qama if she can't, I'll happily go to her and I need to ask her a few things. Quickly get her, it must have been at a short distance, otherwise the Prophet would not have inconvenienced her. So anyway, what happened is that Bilal radiallahu anhu went to the mother of al qama and said, this is a situation, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wants to speak to you and wants to ask you a few questions. So she happily complied, came to the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then he asked her a question. He said, I'm going to ask you a few things. Tell the truth, wahi and revelation comes to me by Allah. I need you to be honest. What's the situation between you and al qama She said, oh Prophet of Allah, I have no complaints about his salah. I have no complaints about his fasting. I have no complaints about his sadaqah. He spends and does so much, he doesn't even know how much or what he's spending, he spends. I've got no i'tiraz on that, I have no complaints. But there is one thing. He obeys his wife over those things where he should be obeying me. This just this. He's obeying his wife over those things where he should be obeying me. At this juncture, I will mention this. We have to understand the hukuk of each and every individual. We don't learn, Allahu Akbar, we don't learn. Why are our houses in turmoil? We don't know what is the juncture at that time. What does Allah say? How do we deal with domestic problems? How do we deal with husband and wife issues? How do we deal with son and father issues? We don't even educate ourselves. When, as they say, something hits the fan and we've got no solution left, Anji, let's ask Maulvi Sahib. Maulvi Sahib, koi cheez daso. Tell us the situation. And then even more, some people say, Oh, need tawiz or get tawiz. By Allahu Akbar. Let's not let the situation go that bad. By study your deen, study your religion. That is why we were given the name Muslim. I have no atiraz on his salah. I have no atiraz on his fasting. I have no complaints about his sadaqah. But yet he obeys his wife over those things where he should be obeying me. Meaning there are some hukuk where you have to obey the mother over the wife. And also there are some things, there has to be some give and take. And this is one of the signs of the day of Qiyamah, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, there are 15 signs. If they come in my ummah, you will see problems and azab and fitna coming to this ummah in such a way, how you cut a pearl necklace. I'm using the word pearl, the word in the, in the hadith mentioned necklace. And you see those beads drop. One by one, one by one, if you act on these 15 things, azab will come to you the same way. And what did he mention? أَطَاعَ الرَّجُلُ زَوْجَتُهُ وَأَقَّ أُمَّهُ أَطَاعَ الرَّجُلُ زَوْجَتُهُ وَأَقَّ أُمَّهُ A person will, he will disobey his mother, but he will obey his wife. 
And what will happen? وَأَدْنَا صَدِيقَهُ وَأَقْصَى أَبَاهُ When he sees his friend, he'll say, MashaAllah, بَخِيرٌ and welcome and خَرِيَةٌ and كَيْفَ حَالٌ and so on. And when he sees his father, change the way. أَبَّا كُوِي كَمْنَا أَكِي أَبَّا كُوِي غَلْنَا أَكِي Let it not be that my father tells me to do something. So we treat friends with respect, push fathers, we, we obey the wife over the mother. Again, let me mention at this juncture, it doesn't mean we just blindly close the eyes because we have extremes within our culture as well. Whatever the daughter-in-law has, she has to do it. But zip, mouth closed, you obey some wata'a and you don't have nothing else to say on top of that. That's not deen. That's not Islam. It is your responsibility to serve the parents. It is not on her head. If Anyway, these are masail we will need to discuss at a later time. But these are things we have to approach our ulama. I'm discussing this hadith and we need to terminate on this hadith. So the mother of Al-Qama, when she's... You know, when she was making bayan about her son, she said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I've got no complaints about al qama His ibadah is second to none. But he obeys his wife where he should be obeying me, and because of that I'm upset. He's hurt my heart. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he mentions, Subhanallah, he mentions, Sakhatu ummihi hajaba lisanuhu an shahadati Allah ilaha illallah. The anger of the mother of, Al- of Al-Qama has seized the tongue of him at this juncture, he could not even say the kalima. So he says to the Sahaba who are present, go fetch me a large amount of wood. A large amount of wood, we're gonna burn him now. So then she says, O Prophet of Allah, Ibni wa thamaratu fu'adi, my, my heart, my soul, my beloved son, you want to burn him in front of my eyes? He said, well it's better for me to burn him now and for Allah to forgive him than for him to go into the akhirah where the, the fire is so intense. She says, she ponders for a bit and she says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I have overlooked all the bad which he has done, I have forgiven him today for the sake of Allah, I am happy with him now. The Prophet ﷺ said to Bilal, now go and see. Qassam by Allah, when he was walking towards the house, he heard him say, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. He came back and gave the testimony to the Prophet ﷺ that Alhamdulillah, his safety has been guaranteed. He has uttered his kalima. His mouth came on the utterance of the shahada. The Prophet ﷺ then gathered the Sahaba and said, Let me tell you something and listen carefully. Those of you that affect your parents, you harm your parents, you offend your parents. May the curse of Allah be on such an individual. Subhanallah. And he mentions that person, not even his fard salah, not even his nafal salah will be accepted in the court of Allah. Very stern words from the Prophet ﷺ. My brothers, Allahu Akbar, what zamana are we in? Where we hear of the stories where children, Muslims, I'm not talking about non-Muslims here. I'm talking about a Muslim. Wallahi, I heard this where a boy, bees, mama, he broke one arm and one leg. This is crazy. What on earth is going on? But that's not, okay, the fault was the youngster. But the truth is, what education did you give to your child? Why did you make any tarbiyat of your child? I asked that because they asked me a question, what do we do? And I said, did you ever make any tarbiyat? They say, Mawlvi Zamam, Garmin Amaz Partain. We read Salah at home. And I said, my dear, my friend, you know, just praying Salah at home is not sufficient for the tarbiyat of those children. We have to understand the tarbiyat is an essential part of our Islamic teachings. Take time out, Allahu Akbar. Take time out. Otherwise, your children will become those people that don't know your rights. Now we don't just teach them for the sake of our own security, no. Do it for the sake of Allah, that this is a haq, we have to do this. There are many incidents which I can share with you, but time doesn't permit. Muslims in old people's homes? Where do you hear of these stories? But these are becoming the trend. They're becoming the trend, the norm. Allahu Akbar. When you serve the parents, you become mustajabu da'wat. And when you disobey the parents, you end up as fuel in the fire of Jahannam. Allah save us all. But we have a lot of broken hearts out there in terms of parents. Someone said, I don't speak to my mom and dad naraz gear. What are you talking about? I don't speak to my mom and dad because I'm upset with them. I'm naraz with them. I don't get along. We don't see eye to eye. We've had a fallout. Then you humble yourself, even if they're wrong, and ask their forgiveness and try to win over their heart. That would be better for you. That would be better for you than rather to be arrogant and say, I'm not asking any forgiveness. Or jane to unna kam jane. They do their thing and they, I'm going to do my thing. My dear brothers, my sisters, Allahu Akbar, parents are those people who strive in every moqa and every moment for us to get us where we were today. 
The least we can do is not, if we cannot, if we cannot illuminate their heart, let's not break their heart. If we have any sort of discord or any sort of disunity or any sort of upset, do it now, sort the issue out now. Because Wahi will not be coming to one of us, or Revelation won't be coming to one of us to say, X, Y, and Z person is not reading Kalima. We will die on the condition at our death. People will be praying the Janazah not realizing that this person is actually in a lot of problem. I'm not trying to scare anybody, the fact of the matter remains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us, this is our deen, this is what we are taught. Let's not our ego get in the way and say, I'm not asking forgiveness. Humble yourself if need be, humble yourself. Do whatever it takes, let it not be that our parents, their heart break. Obviously there are injunctions, the parents cannot tell the child anything to do which is against deen. You have ajeeb situations, even parents are telling children, you can't do this thing here. I, ajeeb, Allah is my witness. Someone wanted to do basic things of deen. Basic things of deen and the parent says, no, you're not doing it in my house. Because they've had such an upset with deen that they won't even let their children pray salah in their own home. This is tantamount to kufr and disbelief. However, ajeeb this may sound to some is, unfortunately we do have these situations and circumstances as well. There needs to be a thing where we educate ourselves in relation to our deen. Allah give us tawfiq, Allah give us the ability, Allah inspire us. Because we don't know the situation we are in until we breathe our last and until we meet Allah on the day of Qiyamah. Any problems now, undo them, sort them out by Allah. It is better for you to humble yourself now than to suffer in the akhirah. al jannatu tahta aqdam al ummahat If you want to receive jannah, then it is beneath the feet of the mothers and may Allah inspire us to make amal on this inshallah and to bring about unity amongst the hearts of not just parents but all relations as well inshallah may Allah inspire us and give us the ability to practice and make amal anything obviously a time a little bit extra please forgive I went over my time by about 2-3 minutes may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice on the good what has been mentioned wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ta'ala la nabina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله عليه صلاة الله وآله والأحباء لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله عليه صلاة الله وآله والأحباء